Hello, this is Sophie Lawson from sophielawson.com and this is another click look video where we click look at various art books and magazines and little Peter the Penguin's with us today he's got bits of thing on him he's still wearing his crown from months ago <laughs> I like him in that crown and today he's going to be unwrapping another little present and it, what this is, is it's a book that 3D Total Publishing sent to me for free and they sent it to me about a month ago and I'm only just getting around to it now but I'm really excited for this so I want to say thank you 3D Total Publishing for sending me this and the book is called Art Fundamentals Theory and Practice and it says look how to critique and improve your art for better results so I'll put a link in the description and everything because it's actually currently on sale so you can get it for a no nice cheap cheaper price it should be cool so little Peter the penguin he's gonna get us in but he's got a he's got to use a knife for this one because <laughs> it's quite hard to do this with um Peter's well I was gonna try and do it like this but I feel like it will take too long that'd be right but I think I think Peter's gonna end up with a a new outfit. <laughs> I'm wrapping this one. They, they put loads of tape on it. There we go. I'm gonna help Peter with this one. Look, you can have a little um, you can have a little like bow tie or something. <laughs> he looks quite cool. Yeah, I'm gonna keep that. He's got a little scarf on, a scarf and a hat. All he needs now are some gloves. This one's going to be quite hard to get into, I think. I'm going to have to do this one. Come on, Peter. No, I can't get in that way. I sometimes wonder whether I should um, cut the videos instead of me struggling to open these things. It's quite... Oh, yeah. I'm getting excited. It's, it's exciting, isn't it? Opening things. He's got there he goes look. He's got one glove on. <laughs> Little Peter's he's got one glove. Oh this is turning into the world's hardest unboxing thing. Nearly there. Come on, Peter. Yay! Look, look at the mess that Peter's got himself into. <laughs> and now uh, he's still gotta get this thing off as well. I wonder why they put the uh, tape on it. Da -da -da. So little Peter is in a right mess. I'm going to leave him like that, I think. <laughs> he's, he's, um, he looks like he's about to be tortured or something. Watch this. Da -da -da. Oh, cool. We've got a little companion book as well. 3D Toto Shop Exclusive Bonus Image Gallery. Oh, where's little Dennis? Little Dennis likes his galleries. Let's start with this. Should we start with this or end with it? I like that they start doing this. What they do is, look at that, look. Oh, cool. It's got a bit of um, texture on the text. I wonder if you can see that on the camera. No. I like it when they do things like that, though. Little bits of... This book feels very expensive like very sort of professional my favorite scene on here i think is these guys these little girls i like this one as well bit of danger there that's a nice one as well look creeping through some sort of tower we'll have a look at that in a minute let's get into this what they've started doing is when you buy books on 3D Toto Publishing Shop, you get like little exclusive book that oh nice. I'm gonna save that to the end. I like reading books. <laughs> so what does it say look? Learn how to critique your own art, focus on the fundamentals, identify problems and fix them for results that advance your technique to the next level. We've got experts walk you step by step through the process of totally remaking an earlier work. 
I like that hat. That's something, who is it? I think it's Proco who's been doing that. Somebody's been doing that where they take a piece of, is it Proco? They've been taking a piece of work on YouTube and reworking it. No, I know it is. It's, um, oh, what's he called? Theodorus. Yeah. Oh, I can't remember his name. He does that. We've also got professional artist and educator Devin Corwin explores the skill of critiquing, critique, critical thinking. I like that as well. A conscious, thorough refresher on the core fundamentals. And we've also got a gallery in here as well. This is a this is a big one. This a nice thick one. Let's get into this little Peter. One of the things with 3D Toto Publishing is we always get, it's always very, you can tell there's a lot of love that's gone into these books. One tree's planted for every book sold as well. Oh, I love that one. I love that. That's beautiful. Oh yeah. The forwards by Simone Grinniwald. I've got I've got some of her books. She's one of my favouritest artists. So we've got a forward, we've got a little welcome, fundamentals. Why learn the fundamentals? Light, colour, composition, perspective, anatomy and narrative. I like that. They've got a whole section for storytelling. We've got critical thinking. Yeah, this is gonna be like a sort of a mind book as well not just about the skills of drawing it's going to be about the skills of the mind as well that's something i learned very early on is a lot of drawing isn't really about how good you can draw it's about the mind we've also got tutorials look we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine tutorials and we've got a gallery as well so i'm going to break oh yeah i love simone I'll go through this quite quite quickly because I tell you what the paper's beautiful. Oh, I sometimes wish you could feel these this paper. It's it's got like a you know like sandpaper. It's like a, a super fine sandpaper. There's like a texture to it. It's cool. So, oh yeah, see, I need stuff like this. I, I feel like you, you never, you're never gonna not need the fundamentals. I wonder, I've drawn so many spheres. I love doing that. I, I could spend all day drawing spheres. I find it quite sort of relaxing. I like that one. Yeah, so this is gonna go right through Oh, it's tangents. I'm very mindful of tangents. That's like the bits where things connect unintentionally. <laughs> so sometimes you get funny things where it might look like, well, you can get rude ones sometimes. You can get a tangent where it looks like a willy or something. And you won't, you won't ever see it because you're so focused on other, something else. That's why it's, again, to do with the mind. Because the mind doesn't see it. Because you're so focused on other things. So you've got, to, you've got to teach yourself to look for those tangents. And then what's cool is, once you've seen them, look at this, look. Anatomy as well. I like that. Yeah, this is one that did have a story in it. Because you're sort of wondering, what's she doing in there? These are sort of critical thinking, look. Knowing what to study is one thing, but applying your learning and pres preserving... Pres what's that? Preserves preserving through the, your mistakes. Persevering through your mistakes can be another matter. In this section, before we move on to the tutorial projects, Devin Corwin shares insights and advice from his experiences as both a learner and a teacher. That's cool. 
What did he write for the bit over here, look? Before you start any tutorial projects, let's begin with an overview of the essentials. In this chapter, art teacher and pro concept artist Devin Corwin provides a guided tour of the must-know fundamentals of art. So that was about 30 pages, that was. I like how it's all colour-coded as well. It's cool, isn't it? Look, developing your critical eye. It's like um, negative shapes as well. It's amazing how you don't see things until you know... You don't see things until you're... You become aware of what you should be looking for and then all of a sudden you can't stop seeing it. <laughs> it's weird. It, I'll tell you what I love about art. I like this one. What I like about art is it sort of hints at the illusionary nature of, of life, of reality. Which is why I think... That's nice. That's why I think a lot of people who start doing art become sort of spiritual tutorials, every artist applies their knowledge of the fundamentals differently. I like that. Yeah, this is why it's really cool when you get different artists, because you can sort of, you learn something from all of them, different things, constructing images and solving problems according to their own personal specialisms and interests. In these step-by-step -step tutorials, you will see how nine different artists apply art theory theory and critical thinking to the process of remaking an older image resulting in a better and before and after snapshot of how much they have grown and improved over time I like that as well so we're going to see before and after look at that look that's mad isn't it that's sort of like um, what I imagine the old ancient past was like I like this, the Temple of Ud Udfu. So that's the old and that's the new. Yay, we get little um, bites. I like it when they do that. Again, any one of these, look at the colours. Any one of these could be turned into a, what do you call it, podcast. Narrative again. Beautiful that is. I like all these little um look, I like all these little textury things. The the water looks nice as well. Big, small and medium. That's yeah, cool, can work through the entire thing look. And then we've got the before and after. So hopefully they'll sort of say what they've done, why they did it. It's mad, isn't it? And the final image, look. Hey, oh cool. He's like, um, that looks a bit like um, Terraria video game. I like these. The strange thing is, both of them are really nice for different reasons. What I like about that is the amount of stars in it. Because the stars look a lot more friendly in that one. But look, in this one the, the stars are actually... Oh, they're proper friends in this one because they're reading books and stuff. But he's capturing them. That's not very nice. Star catcher. See, I like this, um, I'd look into this artist. Oh, cool. Different, different ideas. They've done it as well, look. That's the gold, golden ratio, isn't it? That thing's everywhere, that. Fractal. Because if you went inside that, it would be the same thing again. <laughs> it's it's never-ending. Colours. Oh, this is cool, this is. It's 
bit like a, a monkey. Look, that bag. Cool. Yeah, zooming out. Standing back from your work. That's when you, you're most likely to see tangents and stuff as well. When you zoom out. Oh, I like this. See, what, what you want to do is try and recreate that yourself. Oh, I like the um, playfulness of these stars. Yeah. Look, on this one, he, he looks a lot more like... I don't know, this one, I don't like that he's got them in jars. I feel a little bit sort of upset about that. Because look, even when he's captured them on that one, they're still free. <laughs> look, he's reading a book about the universe. Oh, cool. Look, look how simple these characters are, but they've got lots of fun about them. The Journey of Hearts. See, I've, I actually think I prefer the shapes of the older one because I like the way I like the way there's like um, I like that bit I like that shape which is missing on this one oh cool we've got um, little thumbnails but they're drawing a little fun cat as well. So during their warm up, they're playing, not taking it all seriously. Look, they've colour coded um, wall of thirds is green pattern. That's that's quite a fun way to show a lot of information, isn't it? When you put like colour coded lines into it. What? I can tell you're going to learn a lot from this. Reference. Wonder what um what they're using. Wonder if they talk about what software packages they're using. I like it in black and white as well. Amazing, isn't it? How the different colours makes it feel completely different. Take a break. Look, we've got little, little um. Look, take both visual and practical breaks. It's good to take your eyes away from any art or work-related material on a regular basis. Take a day on the weekend to do something completely different and unusual that you have not done before. It may not seem like you're doing something creative, but getting outside your comfort zone will inspire your work indirectly. That's cool, isn't it? Nothing is ever wasted. I like these little tips. Again, what you could do is you could sort of go through this book, write down all these little tips, and make a podcast about that. <laughs> Black and white. Oh, beautiful! Look at the look at the reflections in that puddle. That's amazing. That. So here we go. Which one? Do, which one do you prefer? I what I would like is I would like that one. I would like that ship, or what is it? Some sort of landscape. I would like that over here. And I'd, I'd, I like the colour, I like the feel of the colours on that one. But I like the, um, I like the scene and I like the, the people on this one better. But then I also like that they're just little shadows there. What I think I'd like is a bit of both put together. It's a final image, look. Here we go, look, little fighter. 
Yeah. He's definitely evolved, isn't he? You ain't got any feet on this one, eh? I wonder why, why, why that is. Oh, this is good. We're going to get the... It's more of a character, so... Again, in about the, the gesture and the silhouettes. There's value in volume. <laughs> That's quite cool, isn't it? Pop, 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 bang. So we've got light and shadow plus form painting plus fall off. I don't know what that is. Plus rim lights. I've never heard of that before. Fall off. I wonder what that is. Fall off. The further away an object is from a light source, the less light will fall on it. Hmm. Final value structure. Oh, I like that. Squiggly. He looks, like, looks right bad, badass, doesn't he? Start simple. <laughs> cool. Little snake. That'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? You could have a character with a belt, and the belt could actually be a snake. So, an actual live snake. Oh, I like that. love it when they do that as well. You get lots of little images on a page. You can sort of go right through it. That is better though when it's on, say, Photoshop or something, when you've got all the layers, because you can sort of toggle them on and off. So you can jump from that to that. I like, I, I like doing stuff like that. Feet. Oh, so he has got feet. Because I did wonder whether they didn't put the feet in because they weren't very good at drawing feet. Because <laughs> I remember someone said that once. Someone said that they always struggled drawing feet. So what they did was they started drawing all their characters without feet. Well, I, I think what, what they ended up saying was the best thing to do is just keep drawing feet. There's that thing about draw a thousand horrible feet and in the end you draw better feet. Again, it goes into that thing about the fear, isn't it? Drawing's all about like facing fears. It's, it's as simple as having the fear of drawing feet. You've got two options. You either you either don't draw them, so you, you sort of don't embrace the fear, or you, you draw them. And when you embrace the fear, you get better. Yay! Oh, yeah. I like both of these. The eyeless dragons. Oh, cool. I didn't realise they were... I like that. These are like Final Fantasy. Look, look at the gesture on that. I like that. Yeah. Look a little bit like um, aliens, though, didn't they? Like cyborgs or something. Putting all the details in. Yeah, I like this. I like the way it feels like um, a lot of motion. Look, look at that. It's just, it's beautiful. Like the brush strokes and the sort of, if you can sort of feel as if it's a windy day or something. Beautiful colours as well. Yeah. This is a this is an artist I'd look into as well. What you begin to realise is when you start looking at things like this, you, you realise how every single part of the image they've thought about it. It's, it's cool it is. I like her little outfit as well. Beautiful colours. Final image. Where's the original one? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? I wonder why they um, put an extra character in. Or 
also that in this one they look a little bit like um, lesbians. This one they look like a group of friends. That also looks a little bit like um, it reminds me of like a PC game. Where this looks like a piece of artwork, if that makes sense. So I feel like this one's got the most amount of skills evolved. That's what I think. What are they doing here, look? That's weird. What's she doing? Look how muscly she is as well. What's, she, what's that? I wonder what's happening. Hey, it's got that texture on, on here. I want to know what she's doing. Oh, that's a sword, look. Hey look, she's got a little tail as well. Some sort of um, demon or something. Look at the way this article's got the colours in the um, the text. The green and purple. Bone structure. Big feet. Know your purpose. No know clearly what effect you are aiming for. What is your intention for a piece? Do you want to convey strength and power or agility and movement? That's what they say in a lot of the articles. All, all about asking questions. That's a very weird image, this one. It's like, um... I don't quite understand what's what's happening here. Like, is she, is she killing him, or is she taking the sword out to save him, to bring him back to life? I'm not quite sure. I like all those birds there. Yeah, the what's the best thing about the uh, the new one is it's more clearer what's happening. Like that, there's a sword in him. In that one, I would never have worked that out. I don't think. Wonders down below. I tell you what's cool about this. Each of these different um, like tutorials, they're completely different. Some of them are landscapes, some of them are characters. Oh, I like this one. Top down view, look. That's the original. The Wall of Thirds. Oh, this is cool. Look, everything. Colours. This has a little boat, look. <laughs> I like that. I like that actually because it, the little boat's popping, whereas on the other one it's more blended in. Mm, I like the way the water's going with the um, thing as well. That's, I love this one. Yeah, this is an artist I'd look into as well. Julia Blackman. Dark hue shifts. I used to make the dark areas of my painting sim simply one colour, but these days I like to incorporate colour variety into my paint strokes to make the whole image more vibrant. Little tips. I love the uh, story on this one because you are wondering uh, what's going to happen next. I could also imagine that on the cover of a magazine, like a free uh, character design quarterly magazine. I think that would make a nice cover. Hmm. 
Yeah, they're both beautiful. What I like about this one is the the water that they've added behind the boat because it mimics the the whale. Got a little um, what do you call that? Some sort of little I don't know. You can say leprechaun. It's not a mystery in the forest. I like the way that's bending though. That they're taking that out on this one. It's a bit, a bit more subtle. Perspective. Oh, weird. They must have, yeah, look. They sort of um, blended the edges. Put it all out of focus. <laughs> what a weird character. I don't know what it is. It's like a, a goat man. It's going to be brilliant to read this because you're sort of because each each of these little images has got a number on it, so you can read. Hopefully, they'll they'll say like the reason I put this here is because of this. So you can look at it and sort of think I like that hat, and then when you read it, hopefully they'll explain why they chose to do it and stuff. That one's definitely better because he's further away. It makes it a bit more like, I would say, menacing. Hmm. He up to something, didn't he? The spider's cave. Oh, look at that. See, that's that for me is like a massive jump for positive. Because that look, he, the spider looks way more epic now. Because you can sort of see the whole thing, and because he's he's smaller. Oh, I like this one. Look at that. Look. That's like um, something kind of limbo. Jeffrey Arnold. Yeah, look. That's how you spell the name. Jeffrey Arnold. This is another artist I'd look into. <laughs> Spiders. Yeah, look, they were playing around with how much detail to have on the spider. Hmm, that's cool, isn't it? You can see that they've actually they've actually put less. They've taken detail away from that spider as they've gone on. Which makes it probably a bit more creepy. Like less is more. Refresh your view. When painting digitally, I constantly flip, flip the image horizontally and I never zoom in more than I need. Digital brushes. I like this because it's very simple with the colours. There's only like really three colours in there. You've got like a yellowy sort of a dark browny greeny and then you got like a sort of a, a light greeny it's cool hey hey look there's another spider there ah that's quite clever isn't it in other words that big one is getting his attention while he's like thinking what's he going to do with that one Another one's coming up behind him. <laughs> so it's a trap. Yeah, that one, that's the one that'll actually kill him. That is brilliant. That one's um, quite, quite creepy though. But I wouldn't say it's a spider. I wouldn't know that that was a spider. 
Yeah, look. So, oh, I'm going to do that. In a minute, I'm going to go through the two images. Because what they do is they say, look, the original... I wonder if this is the last one. Be careful. <laughs> yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through those images again. And see what they said about each one. Because they, they did a little thing there, I didn't see that. So this first one here, the original image, they said, lighting lacks dynamism, poor perspective, colour palette could be improved. And the new one, they've said, improved perspective creates scale. Edges and details are clear and legible. Lighting feels believable and Im immersive. That's quite interesting. This one, they've said, unbalanced composition. Lighting and style lack definition. Weak narrative. Yeah, I would agree with that, actually. The new one, they've put like, distinct and well-defined style. Balanced composition. Lighting and colours feel believable. Hmm. I wonder what they said about this one. This was the one that I sort of liked the original colours. Look, landscape composition feels disconnected. Yeah, but I actually like that. Because I feel like it makes it a bit more like you've got a sort of cross it feels like there's a distance there that you it's going to be hard to travel whereas this one it feels like they're just going to go straight across world design could be more specific characters and narrative are too vague but again i like the fact that the character was because look in the original the characters are just shadows but that makes it a bit more mysterious in the new one they've said, lighting colours are more vibrant and confident. Composition feels deeper and more immersive. Yeah, characters and setting feel connected. I like the, uh, I didn't see that before. Here's a little fighter. I wonder what they said about this one. The original one, inaccurate anatomy, blotchy colours and inaccurate lighting, stiff and natural pose. Whereas now, what's that? Enlivened, enlivened colour choices, relaxed and believable posture. Yeah, because not much has changed, but he's actually, he does look a lot more, yeah, believable. He's, you can feel the weight of him now. Whereas before he felt a bit like flat, I suppose. Realistic skin tone. And, oh, I'm interested to see what they say about this one. The original, lack of technical expertise. That's interesting. Composition and world design could be improved. Inaccurate anatomy. Yeah, that's why, that's what was making me feel like it's a video game. Because, like, video games, they can't quite do anatomy. Whereas this one feels more more real. That's probably what was making it feel a bit like sort of a video game image. Improved composition and realistic anatomy. Complex colour and light. Better clothing and more detailed architecture. Also, I like the... Um, I like the fact that we're seeing more of their body as well. Because it was a bit that was a bit of a weird sort of cropping there. Oh this one would be interesting as well. In the original, general messiness. <laughs> Composition could be improved. Inaccurate anatomy. In the new one they've put accurate anatomy, nuanced colour palette, visually pleasing composition and flow. This whale. I wonder what they say about this look. The original lacks detail and rendering. Lighting and colour could be improved. Flowing composition idea could be stronger. Is that to do with the um, thing? Dynamics, the, the new one. Dynamic scale and flowing composition. Hello. 
What's this here? Image feels textured and vivid. Colour and lighting feel vibrant and magical. I like that word, magical. Because that is what I was thinking, actually. Sort of a bit, sort of, yeah. That's the perfect word, I think. What about this one here, look? I wonder if they say about him being too close. Weak composition. Lack of perspective planning. Lighting could be improved. In the new one, clear colour palette and mood. Strong value structure. Improved depth and perspective. And then this, this, um, is this the last one? Weak lighting. Unclear scale and structure. Yeah, unclear. Disorganised composition. Yeah. The new one, distinctive colour and lighting. Shows a clear, memorable scene. I agree with that. Look, a strong sense of depth and scale. That's cool. You can learn a lot from just those two, those two pages, I think. Here's the gallery. Little Dennis. I think little Dennis is going to come in here. Because he likes these. The dream world. We like the dream world. Look, in these gallery pages, you'll find the before and after images of six professional artists with a range of styles and specialisms. See how they tackle the remaking process and how they have benefited from months or years of study, practice and reflection. <laughs> I like that. 2.47am, Christopher Scholes. Ah, oh, they're doing that. Look. Original. I mean, look at that. Again, they're both beautiful, though. Oh, look at these. Cosmos. I like these images. Oh, these are. Oh, I love this. Forest dwelling. I'd like to live there. Look at this one as well. Cool. I like the tree on that, though. I like the shape of the tree. There's only one little negative about this book I can see is that the um, you've got images that like when the image goes right across and you, you can't really see it properly because of that. Don't know what you can do about that really. Look at that! It got a big um, some sort of what's it called pumpkin or something in it. Yeah, look, a huge pumpkin. I like that. Oh, cool. Little um, character here. Remaking process. That's the original. That's the final. Yeah, she pops more, doesn't she now? I th for me, that's quite subtle, but cool. <laughs> He's cool as well. Da -da -da. They're like the uh, Garner sisters from that video game. Teachery. He's cool. Look, we've got like, it's like the old days with technology. Cabin in the swamp. That's quite cool, isn't it? Oh, I love that hat. Can you see that? He's got a little gun. Get off my land. <laughs> Imagine if he shot that, it would just echo, wouldn't it? In, the, in that for area, is that glossary? Lots of little words. Wonder what he's thinking. Yay! They've done it on here as well. I love it when they do this. This is one of my favourite things when we see the the artist. Oh, that's cool as well. We're going to get to see the artist and the piece of artwork, and you can also get the little website as well. Why have they hidden their face? Little Jeffrey, look at him, look. Hello. Hey, he's a spider one. Spider man. Spider man. Little Devin, he's the main guy, isn't he? Little Dom. He's cool. Oh, she's cool as well. Oh, I like her as well. You won. You won Park. Yeah, look at him, look, down there, look. <laughs> He's cool, isn't he? 
Cheeky choppy. Oh, this is cool. Danielle. How would you say that? Miki. She's nice, isn't she? I like that one as well. Christopher. Tin. Oh, weird. Tin. Cool name. Tin. Tin Tin. Angela Wang. Oh, I've heard of her. And then Elder. That's my that's one of my favourites, that one. And that's it. And then we've got all the Yay, they've put uh, that's good as well. Accessories. So if you're into accessories, page 266. Talking about accessories somewhere. Look, perspective errors such as the book and back backpack are now corrected. I like it when they do that as well, because you might be you might be struggling with something. Outfits. Ah, oh, they've even put a colour like yellow. So you can look for it. I wonder if they've done it with all of them. Red. You can look for colours and find orange. That's cool. Art Fundamentals, second edition. And we've got those little willies again. They like putting willies in here. Learn, create and share. 3D Toto Publishing. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I thought it was brilliant. Art Fundamentals, Theory and Practice. What I liked about this one was the... the, the, the I felt like there was a nice balance between... So I would say studying and inspiration. I can just tell there's going to be so much to learn from this book. I feel like each one of these you could sort of spend a month on studying. Cool, and I like that it's all different types of styles and stuff. I'd say there's something for everyone in that. And then we've got this one, little companion book. <laughs> little, little monkey on the front, look. Little monkey guy. Even this feels um, professional as well. Yay! Oh, oh, cool! Look, see. That's that. No, I like that. Look, we've got the um, third eye there in a triangle, a like pyramid. Christopher Skulls. Hey, is that Freddy Krueger? Look, it looks like Freddy, that. Menacing. I think he's friends with these crows as well. That's nice. Look, skeletons. Underwater pirate ships. Mad as that. Imagine if that was really going on. Oh, I love that hat. That's a little bit like the artist Yumi. Got one of her art books. She does art like that, sort of capturing the sort of the universe. I like that as well. Top down view. Christ Christina. Ooh, are they shrimps? Oh, cool. Again, this is this is full of um, areas. Let tin. This is full of um, different styles as well. Oh, I love this. See, I got to look into this artist. I think this is the one I said in the the big book. There's little fishies. The shapes of these fishies is cool. Look at that as well. I love these fishies. <laughs> Kiss a bum. Epic, that is. Look. <laughs> what is he? Is he like a little... Some sort of little... Um, cartoon character or something? Hey, little ghost. Look, 
You can see his little legs. Gonna like trick or treat him or something. He didn't get enough sweets. Oh, cool. Square tree, look. Nice. I like that. See, that's very simple but effective. Oh, that's brilliant. I love that they do that. Again, I wish you could feel that. It feels, um, there's a nice texture to that. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed that. It was the book Art Fundamentals, Theory and Practice, How to Crit Critique and Improve Your Art for Better Results by 3D Total Publishing.